Welcome to Loco Gringo, Mexico, the place where we transform a tourist into a traveler because you deserve to see more of the world than just what's in a guidebook. Each week, we talk with amazing locals who know the Riviera Maya and Yucatan like only a local can and get them to share their tips and insights on the local scene, culture, and cuisine from a local's perspective. So pour yourself a margarita, grab a comfy chair, and let's get the show going. Hola, everybody. This is Kay Walton with Loco Gringo Mexico. Thanks for joining us today. Well, if it sounds like I have a cold, it's because I do. And, you know, having a cold in the heat and humidity is never really a fun time. But I definitely have had fun talking to our next set of guests. And this is the first couple we've had, two people that we're talking to, Map Chick and her husband, Perry. And then you're going, well, what kind of name is Map Chick? Well, if some of you, that might be a familiar name. Map Chick is known for her maps. They are known for their maps. And they're going to talk to us today about how they began mapping the Riviera Maya and Yucatan Peninsula and some of the most popular maps that are on the market today. And information you just won't find um, if you're just searching the web. So let me introduce you to them. Hey, everybody. I want to introduce you to two friends of mine. We were just giggling because we think we've known each other for more than... 15 or 16 years. I'd like to introduce you to Laura and Perry McFarland. They have the Can Do Maps, and they actually have some of the best maps in the area, and they agreed to talk to us today. Hey, guys, how are you? Great. Excellent, Kay. <laughs> now, you guys, now, and, and I know I'm talking to you up in Iowa, right? Yes. So tell me, if you will, how people in, in, in Iowa, how you guys are, you got down here to start making maps because your maps are absolutely incredible. And so how did you find your way down here ba- way back when? Total accident. Yes. And this is the main question we get all the time. So w- our first trip to Cancun was, uh, we just used to go to a restaurant in downtown Des Moines and we had a friend who was a waiter and had this big contest where they had a, a, obstacle course where waiters had to run through holding trays of drinks and stuff. And he won it. And he won a trip to this unknown place, none of us had ever heard of, called Cancun, Mexico. And he came back and he says, you guys got to go to this place. It's so much fun. So that was our first trip to Mexico. This would have been about 1980, maybe? Early 80s, yeah. Yeah. And so Dave is the reason we went, and uh, a silly little race that they were trying to promote this unknown destination of Cancun. Yep. We, that's amazing. Yeah, that's how we first Back got. then, Cancun was perhaps a half dozen hotels. Uh, Lorenzio's Lobster House restaurant was already there. Yeah, and that really was the main restaurant in the hotel zone. Everybody else got on the bus and went downtown to eat. Every no, night. there was no bus. It was taxis still. Oh, yeah, it was mostly taxis. Yeah. So right. it was really primitive back then. Yeah. And uh, one bad thing, we, we kept going back with no finances whatsoever. <laughs> so the first time we stayed in a decent hotel, and then I think this is part of the reason the adventure started, we would go with no money, uh, buy a loaf of bread and some butter and peanut <laughs> butter. We sound really pitiful, don't we? <laughs> and uh, we would pretty much rough it, share hotel rooms with people or sleep on the beach. Or we packed our tent. We did. Yeah. And that's part of the thing. We'd get back to the airport and we'd look pretty rough after tenting, you know, a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. Down at Chimwheel Campground. And, oh, that was the best place ever. And people would look at us strangely like, where have you been? What have you been doing? And so we'd just start saying what we were doing. And well, how did you get there? And so we'd say, we'd get on the bus. And, and people were just just amazed. And we thought, well, this was so easy. Why was this why is this so hard? So we thought, we need to kind of share this information somehow. Yep. And so we started, we actually started writing a travel book. And once we got to the center, I'm a graphic designer. Once we got done with this, in the center, I thought, I'm going to put this really elaborate, nice map. Because most travel books just have this black and white map that's not very good. And I realized all the information in the entire book can fit in these blank spaces on the map where there's water, there's an empty block of land. I can put a block of text and tell about a restaurant. 
That's how we ended up in the map business. Yes, instead of a book. Yep. <laughs> wow. Now, do you still have that manuscript? Any any dreams and fantasies of having that book published one day? No, but I still do have them in a rough format. Um, about five different versions of it. Yeah. In different, like different sizes. One was newspaper style. Uh, one was book style. All different. We experimented with about everything. But no, it'll never come to fruition. I I think actually not a guidebook because that's what we do with the maps, but maybe more of a book of just our experiences would be fun over the last 20 some oh, years. That would be a blast. You know, and all the people we've met and all the fun and crazy experiences we've had. I think that'd be a more fun. Oh book. yes. That'd be so much fun. Get on that Perry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be, a, that would be super cool. I mean, I think that uh, the journey, the journey is, um, even more important than the destination or so the, the travel quotes go. And Kay, one of the most amazing things about going through this part of Mexico are the people. Um, like one of the things we do is we will go into a village for the first time. This was especially when we did the inland towards Chichen Itza map. You'd go into a village and sometimes they didn't even have a taxi driver. So I would find someone with a car, pay them maybe $100 for the whole day. Take me, I want to see where you swim. I want to see the cemetery. I want to meet everybody that's, the, the ancient people, everything. Everything you can dream of. Yeah, anyone who has a story. They would do that. At the end of the day, I'm exhausted. I want to get on the bus and get back to civilization. <laughs> and no, they <laughs> insist that I come and have dinner with them. But it's wonderful. All the neighbors come. <laughs> no, it's blissful. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's just, that's the way these people are. Now, did you speak any Spanish at this time? No. No. Just, you know, what we could pick up here and there just to get along or just to, you know, do the basics. Yeah. But you have a great story about riding the bus. The very first time we were going to ride the bus from Cancun to Playa del Carmen. Oh, yes. He did practice in Spanish how to buy a bus ticket, and that was really good. Because, <laughs> Kay, what I would do is memorize phrases that I thought I might need. <laughs> yeah. And... I thought that was a wonderful idea. I'd memorized tons of phrases till I got down there and I went to the bus station in probably perfect Spanglish. <laughs> I asked when the next bus to Playa del Carmen was. This was in the Cancun airport. Mm -hmm. And the lady replied, That's what it sounded like to us. <laughs> and so I just pretty much thought, okay, I'm going to give up and I'm just going to come back later and try again in English this time, and the people behind me asked if I could help them get their bus. Yeah. They were from Europe. Yeah. We like, you could ask in Spanish, but we didn't understand what the response was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we just got on a bus and ended up wherever. <laughs> yeah, I think we got, I think we almost mapped Nicaragua that trip. <laughs> no, I understand. There's too many times I have either said yes when I should have said no, or no when I should have said yes because I didn't understand the reply. Right. <laughs> Now we have this uh, thing where Perry's really pretty good with his Spanish, and I don't speak very good Spanish, but I can usually understand the response better than he can. So we kind of tag team it. Like, he will ask a question, and I will just listen closely and figure out what the answer was, and we somehow get by. Yeah, we speak in a triangle now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, that's cool. It works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now... I, I have a question, and, and maybe it's my memory that's a little foggy. Is Perry, didn't she used to pedal your way around? I mean, you're talking about being on the bus, but for some reason I thought years ago you also rode your bike up and down the coast. Yes, that was, that was incredible. And, um, what I, and what I did was the bicycle, I found an odometer that had down to like the hundredths of a mile. And this was before GPS, so I would ride my bike. I had an odometer mounted on the handlebars and a compass. So I would go in a certain direction, right down, you know, the, what do you call them now? I can't even think now because everything's GPS. <laughs> but, the, you know, the direction. Yeah, miles. And keep track of the mileage until I had to turn the bike to go another direction. Yeah. This was way before any Google map was out there. So... This is making your own map with a, a compass and a bike odometer. Okay, the crazy. hours involved were just excruciating. <laughs> I and, cannot imagine. And typically I'd have to push it 
actually down all these roads like Tang Ka I did. I pushed a bike. And every time the road turned a little bit, I would have to go straight, mark down the miles, then turn my bike slightly and go until I'd... Yeah. You had to do it that way in like these little jogs, little angles. Um, then we also would charter a plane and I'd hang out of the plane and shoot photographs. You have to get kind of the shape. Because they'd have to shoot down. So they would take the door off the plane and I would actually hang out and shoot straight down. That's amazing. Yeah. I had to take a lot of insurance on him for that. (laughs) (laughs) It's usually a rope tied around his waist with some guy holding it. (laughs) Okay. Those were the days when you, you could fly in a plane and you would go two or three minutes between hotels. Yeah. I remember those days. That same thing would be so hard to do because it's snap, 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 snap. It's Mm -hmm. just hotel, 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 hotel now. Yeah. So much growth. Getting harder. (laughs) It is getting harder. I mean, we, you know, we, we did our aerial tours back in the day and was amazing flying, but you know, especially around Playa del Carmen and that it just got to the point where we couldn't keep up with the development. And nowadays it's not, it's not um, inexpensive to rent a plane anymore. Right. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. that was a huge expense for us back yeah, then. Yeah, it was huge yeah. expense, but there was no other option. Um, nobody had ever, nobody had ever really mapped that area at all. Uh-uh. So and, we were on our own. And and luckily now, now we use GPS when we go down. We're not yeah. pushing the bike anymore. <laughs> yeah, we still go down every. We still map it's everything still ourselves. Um, we don't use Google Map or anything. Like a lot of people might just feel like they should copy things. But we don't copy anybody or any information. Um, if it's on the map, we've figured it out ourselves. Well, I mean, if you look at Google Map, they're not always right either. Exactly. Yeah. There are some discrepancies. I noticed yeah. I was looking up something for somebody one time. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. No, I, 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 they're, they're, I mean, I know they're getting closer, and, but there's still a few places that even we've found that uh, we've, we, we've, we beat Google there, as you guys did. Right. Yeah. Right. And not, but I won't knock them. What an awesome thing they put together. Is it, you know, you can look at things from an aerial view. It's so incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people thought that that would put us out of business. But we, what we sell is the personal aspect. We're your personal travel guides. We go to all the restaurants and try them. One thing we've noticed on restaurants is a lot of times they'll be highly recommended on some of these big websites. We won't name any names. <laughs> and and we don't, and we really don't agree. We'll go down and we'll write down the top ten or twenty restaurants. A lot of times we don't agree with that. No. And um, and I don't know. Maybe it's our taste. You know, maybe it's what we expect. Our expectations are, but you know. But we, we've had wonderful results with people being happy with our recommendations. And yeah, so that makes it worth it. So we must be doing something okay. Yeah. Yeah. Something after all these years. We yeah. still have taste buds. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you guys have, I know you can buy for the, the map, cra- the, the crazy map people who want to own all of your maps. You have a total of what, 10 maps or 12 maps? It's seven sets. Seven sets. Now, which, can I ask, what was your favorite set? I mean, do you have a favorite set of maps I, um, that you, that's like, oh man, I love doing this. I love updating it. That's uh, more fun than maybe some of the others? Oh, are you um, going to say something? Are you going to say something well, different than we mine? We know what you like. Well, all my favorites always used to more Harris. I just love the small that I can just walk around, and I go and oftentimes do the updates with that on that one myself, and just it's just so easy to get around and stuff, and I really enjoy that one. And I'm real type A, so I just love the fact that I get to move around all the time. Yeah, <laughs> although you kind of like the adventure one, like. Going to all the ruins and things like oh, that. Oh, I did enjoy that. You're, you're, that's kind of your favorite. Yeah. When you get the machine. Yeah. But they're all, like, I figured out, everybody asked me, what's your favorite place to stay? And I always think, every time we go down and map and we're in different areas, I love where I am when I'm there. You know, every place I really like. That's true. For all different reasons, but every place I like. So I can't say that I don't like any place we map. I love them all. Yeah. Yeah. And they are, they're all very unique. Mm-hmm. All the, like Puerto Morelos, Isla Mujeres, Cozumel, Tulum, everything has its own unique personality. Mm-hmm. 
No, it's absolutely, and I think the 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 whole Yucatan Peninsula has a little bit of something for everyone, no matter what your tastes are. Whether you know you want to be up at Isla Mujeres or down in Tulum, we've definitely got the variety that people you know for for everybody who wants from mild to wild. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you can go on a vacation where you have all kinds of entertainment and eco parks and things like that. Or if you want to explore Mayan ruins, or if you just want to lay in a hammock on the beach. I mean, there's something for everybody. Now, what is your most popular map? I mean, you see people, you know, buying them online. And what is what is traditionally your number one selling map? Okay, you'll be shocked. I'm going to let Laura tell you. But this map we originally did, and we put it online for free because the area is so small we knew nobody would ever buy it and justify the huge expense of printing a product. So they could download the PDF files, print them on their color printer at home and tape everything together. And drum roll. Well, it's Isla Mujeres. That's our biggest selling. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, actually we didn't even really want to map it. That was one of the places we would go and say, well, this is our vacation time. We're just going to, after we're working on maps, we'd end up there for a couple of days just to relax. Um, but we started getting requests for this map, and it kind of snowballed, and yeah, now that's our biggest selling map. That's awesome. Now, have, now here's a question for you. Is, is you come, is, is you're in the area, you're updating all the maps and everything. If you were not to be working, so it wasn't a work vacation, but it was an actual vacation, Is do you have a favorite area that you'd say, oh, yeah, I want to come back here? Um, on vacation and, and just relax and not be working so much. Do you have a favorite? I think you would probably be Isla Mujeres. Isla or Tulum. I really like Tulum also. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Maybe I'd have to divide my vacation and, <laughs> half the time there and half the time. And I'm so strange because I just love being anywhere. Yeah. I, I love it all. Um, Playa del Carmen, the hustle and bustle would get to me after a little while. I actually think we'd have a really hard time if we said, let's go on a vacation. Where should we go? I think we'd have a really hard time choosing one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can, under- I can understand that. Now, and, and you don't do any maps um, outside of the Yucatan, do you? There's no, there aren't any for like Chiapas or any other areas of Mexico? No, we, we're interested in growing and we just keep updating our products. Yeah. And it's really time consuming. And we get we get requests and we think how much fun it would be but there's two of us and you know just keeping up with all the updates and everything so far we haven't found the time to explore some other places but we've got some on a short list yeah (laughs) if we ever get the time we have a few places we're going to do one of them we're going to we're going to start doing the research on this winter and that is Holbosch yeah oh two thumb two two thumbs up I give two thumbs up on your decision for Holbosch Yeah. yeah And then we get a lot of requests for Cuba. Mm-hmm. I also get I also get requests for um, Cabo, and we've never oh, even Cabo. been there. Yes, we do. We get a lot of requests for that, and haven't made it that direction yet. Yeah. So. In all of your discoveries, in all of all of your your your, your the the miles and kilometers you've crossed here. Um, I want to know, and I ask everybody this question, is some little hidden gems or some secret spots that you guys go, which that that are just those secret spots you go, oh, let's just go. And you go not because it's so much for work as much as that you're just so passionate about it, whether it's just a place to go have tacos or a cenote or an attraction that you really like. Do you have anyone, any things that you could suggest to the people who are listening? Mm -hmm. Okay. There is one restaurant that really it's always good we don't even need to go there and eat there every time because we already know and um that is chimico's and we just really love that one love going and sitting on the beach and getting that wonderful big plate of ceviche that has that little surprise underneath it i mean i can go sit there all day long but i can't (laughs) we we recently met some friends in Mexico and took them on a little tour. Mm-hmm. And uh, they went to Tulum. Afterwards is when we met them, and we took them to Chimico's. Are you familiar with where it is, Kay? Oh, yeah. I, I remember I go to Chimico's all the time, and I remember when Soliman Bay wasn't even really on the – wasn't on a map yet. I know. No, I, there yeah. weren't 
all those, there's a lot of houses along there and everything, and there wasn't any of those houses when we first went there. Now, the first time I mapped Solomon Bay and Tanka area, you could ride from one entrance all the way through to the other. Now they've blocked it. On your bike. And I rode on my, I was on my bike. Yeah. yeah. But that was a long haul. Well, and it's, a, it's, it's kind of sad that that road is still not open yet because, you know, to go to between two bays, whether you were going to go to, you know, whether to Mikos and then want to go down to Tonka or vice versa, so you got to go out to the highway now. And that kind of sucks because it's always been a fun adventure to take the coconut road or the, um, along the shoreline. And it's kind of sad that they had to shut that, that access off. Oh, yeah. It's terrible. But there's so many changes. Now, one of our favorite places on earth was uh, Chemwheel Bay, oh. the little cove. Oh, and it's closed off now. And that's the place where we camped. Yeah. We took our tent and set it up there on the beach. And that was one of the most memorable and Kate, trips. There used to be a campground there. This is back in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. And it was run by Oscar. Or was it Oscar and Lalo? It was yeah. Lalo. Yeah. Yeah. Lalo ran it. One night we came back from doing some research and came back to our tent really late after dark. And he had a restaurant and bar there. Um, so we ordered fish. Of course. <laughs> and we waited and we waited and we waited and nothing. We were so hungry. And I'll bet an hour later, finally, here, here he comes with snorkel gear and fish on the end of a spear. So we had ordered fish in the dark, and he had to go catch them. That and was, then he cooked them for us. <laughs> and <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> That's awesome. That was really good. That was back when things were still primitive. Yeah. Which was really interesting. <laughs> it, cer it certainly was. Okay, so on some more modern day spots that you really like, aside from Chimico's, any, any other faves? Hmm. Okay. One of my new favorites. Oh, I'm not going to remember the name of it. Oh, no. Place to eat. Uh, Playa del Carmen, that, um, that new um, taco place in Playa del Carmen. Um, the Mexico City um, oh, type tacos. I'm not going to remember it either. Oh, my you mind's a blank. I'm so sorry. My mind's a blank. We, Look at on favorites. On the we always like to find strange little taco shops and things. Okay. Um, one thing we do, Kay, is instead of some guidebooks just send you to restaurants and one guy even told me he's not allowed to put a restaurant in the book unless it's been there for four years. Oh. A, a, a travel guide, right? Yeah, yeah, a guy I bumped into. Yeah. And um, we, tr we try to find new ones. Sometimes it backfires on us because they'll close and we have to do an update sheet. Says so sorry, but, yeah. but we always like to give them a shot. And uh, we, we look for something that we call water cooler talk. And what that means is, when you go back to work after your vacation, you're going to talk about this unique little place you went to. It might be dumpy. It might, you know, it might be elegant, um, yeah. but they'll find it and they'll have found it, you know, hopefully due to our maps. And they'll go back and say, we went to this great place we found on this map and we were the only tourists there. And it was so wonderful. And we like to create that that excitement and that fun for people for their vacation. Get you to do a little adventure. Yeah. Get outside your box, perhaps. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more with you. Now, okay, okay, here's a couple. In Cancun, there is a restaurant. I'm going to say maybe a mile and a half from some of the fanciest restaurants in Cancun that overlook the lagoon. These are the, you know, $50 to $100 a plate restaurants. This is in the Cancun hotel zone. This is actually in yeah. the hotel zone. It sits on the lagoon. It's been there since probably oh, I don't early know. 70s, maybe even earlier. It was a, one of the first restaurants. And all it is the, the, where they cook is stacked stones, wood-fired grill, an old piece of sheet metal, uh, awnings for a roof. It is so rustic. It's like walking back in time and cheap fish. All the locals go there for lunch. Nobody knows about it. You'll see um, businessmen down there. But yep. the thing is that's funny is you'll never see it just driving by on the street or even... Is there a name or a sign or anything? El Galeon del Caribe. And it's a tiny sign and it's you'll see just a bunch of, you know, uh, 
greenery and plants. And then there's this little stairway that just goes down. But it's just a little sign and just little steps that go down to it. Okay, I'm going to go there next time I'm in Cancun. I'm going there. You've sold me on that. No bathrooms, no running water. Yeah, you have to yeah. bring in your own water. Um, fresh but, fish. But it's a great experience, and yeah. the food's really delicious. So I'm there. I'm all over it. Okay. <laughs> no electric. Okay. okay. Maybe a little mosquito spray might oh, yeah. be in order. Because it's right in the mangrove. Yeah. It's really interesting. And that's the kind of stuff we love to search out. Oh, yeah. That's the best. Yeah. Now, when was the last time you guys did um, updates? I mean, are these some of these are some of these spots on, are they on your current maps? Or you, I, I know you guys just did an update within the last few months. Is that correct? We just updated um, and printed new Cancun, Isla Mujeres, and Playa del Carmen. Um, so yes, that one in Cancun is on that Cancun map, mm -hmm. um, and it has been for a couple yeah, of years, for a long I think. Time. Um, and we did a lot of work for Riviera Maya on our last trip but just weren't able to get all of those maps completed and ready time, in time to print. So now we're working on Riviera Maya again, and we'll be making another trip, and we'll be printing that one soon. Well, that would be great, and maybe when, when that one is gone, has gone to print, you guys would come back and share some of, your, some of the updates and things that you have for your Riviera Maya map, and we can... Uh tell everybody where to get it because I know um, we use the maps in the office all the time and I uh, you know I'm always ordering new ones because I give all mine away <laughs> um, but but I mean but that's because there's such great maps oh, thank thanks you. Kay hey no I mean lo no love it love it love it and I and I really I get I, I'd love to help people out when they need something, and I, but I always seem to give them away my, my last map. And I'm like, damn it, now I don't have my maps again, and i got to order more. We uh, actually have customers who order multiple maps because they give them away on their trip. Yeah. You know, people that order two or three because they, uh, they say they'll always run into someone that says, oh, that's a great map. Where'd you get it? Well, they don't have any time to get it once they're there. So these people will just say, well, here, here's my... Here's my <laughs> map that I got for anybody who needs it. So we have people who do that a lot. We have a lot of loyal customers who help promote us that way. Well, speaking of promotion, how can people find you guys? Laura, you go by, by Map Chick, which is, I mean, you've had that nickname for a long time. But will you share with everybody who's listening the best ways to find you guys, to order your maps, and to reach out? Um, our main website is CancunMap.com. No S at the end of maps. Just Cancun map. Um, then I have a website that is mapchick.com. And um, then, of course, we're on Facebook and Twitter. And basically, that's the best way to reach us. Excellent. Well, we'll have we'll have show notes and everybody can go to our website, lookugringo.com forward slash podcast. And we will have some notes about the places that Laura and Perry spoke about today and direct contact information and links over to their websites and Facebook profiles. So, if, you know, you can reach out to them anytime. And of course, you can always contact me and I can fast track you to Laura and Perry at um, ask at lococringo.com. Guys, wow, this has been great. I've really enjoyed it. Oh, I have too. We yeah. always have fun talking to you, Kay. I know, I know. And we don't we do, we need to do it more often. I think last time we had, last time we talked was not too long ago, actually. A few months ago we had breakfast in Tulum. Yes, we did. Kay, we can't stop. I've got a hundred stories boiling in my head. <laughs> Okay, I want your stories, Perry. Trust me, I want those stories. So we just we, we're gonna we'll we'll have episode two of the Laura and Perry show. How's that? No, uh, oh, this could go okay. on forever. You don't know yeah. what you've gotten yourself into. <laughs> <laughs> Well, a big muchas gracias to Laura, a.k.a. Map Chick and Perry, for their time today. And a big thank you to all of you for tuning in. You can get today's show notes at lococringo.com forward slash podcast for some of the places that they've mentioned, links over to their websites, and contact information. If you're looking for maps, you can also find Laura and Perry's maps on Loco Gringo. Just go to our website, lococringo.com, and in that search box, put in the word maps. And you can get all of their maps, including their ever-so-popular Isla Mujeres map, um, right online. Until next week, everyone, hasta la vista. 
Thanks for listening. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe. For links, show notes, and more information, head on over to LocoGringo.com or give us a call toll-free at 800-478-0081. Porque se trajo la luna, estaba enferma la rana. Su madre soba que soba de dos de pluma la panza. Pensó ranita que luna era una toronja blanca. Y aunque la luna es de leche, la leche estaba cortada. Croa, croa, de dos de pluma. Croa, croa, de dos de agua. Croa, croa, de dos de pluma.